Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Star Wars Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary Emperor's Throne Room Collector's Set. This comes with 807 pieces and I built it live over on my Twitch channel. Now this cost me $100 US and if you see a view products link in or around the video, you can click that to see some places you can buy this. Set comes with the minimum acceptable number of figures, that is three of course, and the base size of it is just about the same as the average amongst the diorama sets that they've done for Star Wars. And check this out. This is one of the coolest things about the set, in my opinion, looking at it from around the back. Interestingly, this is a very nice, just plain dish piece or, or yeah, yeah, dish. I was gonna say disc, but a dish piece that's that's printed. And then all of these are individual windows that get placed around and they're actually attached to a flexible hose. Actually, there are two of them. There's one around the outside and one around the inside to help to, to locate all that together. And it just looks interesting to me, at least from different angles. I also found this to be very simple, but nice, although I don't like the tan showing up, but it's just one of the more interesting things to look at, I think from around the backside amongst ones that are really designed to primarily be looked at from one side. And this is the whole presentation of it. You do not get the Palpatine uh, reincarnation reactor shaft to send him to send him down. This just takes you from his upper platform with the throne on it out to these interesting console things. Obviously, the Empire learned from their mistakes with the Death Star 1 and implemented some OSHA compliant handrails around the spaces in the Death Star 2. So you've got some of those here. And there are just enough studs to put figures in a handful of key locations. So you got one stud available there, one stud available there, and then up above you can put uh, palpy on either side and that's just it. You don't even have one in the middle. You don't have any on, on the stairs. So you're a little, a little bit limited in uh, positions there though. Of course, some folks prefer to see no studs whatsoever on Lego things, which is somewhat ironic, but it is a thing. That's a fine quote to put on the front. And of course these are printed all three of these pieces. This one here is intended to be removable slash collectible just for that particular event, you know, special event. If you you know, get tired of that, we move on to the 45th or 50th or whatever, you know, in the future you still have this set, just take that off or you can put it in a, you know, a separate collection. But it's the same piece that's used in um, uh, more than one set. The overall build is pretty, I mean, pretty right. It looks pretty right. I actually liked how they set up the kind of pits down around the base of these round console I, again, I, I don't remember exactly what they're supposed to be. They have no significance in the movie, except they just looked really good. But I personally really in the in the build process, I really found this right here to be very satisfying to insert because you make some of the frame behind here and then it has some some studs on the side available to it. And then you build this all this stud on the side plate and tile thing as just a, a thin strip. You build it on the ground, it's connected together with some, some hinges and you see how it's able to move just a little bit where it's not connected. The, the main studs are up here, but then you just kind of sit it down into this slot. There's just enough room for it here. And then you press it into the studs on the side around here. And it just feels really good. It's very satisfying to me. I also found the throne itself to be especially good. Probably the best official Emperor Palpatine's throne that they've done to date. Obviously they can spin around, but I want you to see the detail just a little bit better. So he's got that overhang over the top and it leans nicely into the purple down the, down the center. So you get a little bit of extra interesting shaping and a little bit of extra color in it as well. I think that all works out pretty nicely. I'm happy with that. And if we take Palpy here and put him in the chair, of course he wants to have his legs up. He's got that nice flowy cape so he can be leaning back just chilling, you know, waiting for the, the rebel fleet to arrive. Or he can be leaning forward like that with interest at what's going on down below. I can kind of move the cape out of the way a little bit better. Of course, I'll show you the minifigures up close a little bit better later. But again, this is just nicely done. I accidentally took one piece off of it, but it's also on a turntable back there. It's able to spin around. With that removed, you can more clearly see the inner flexible tube ring that's used. I mean, that just looks great to me. It's an interesting choice to go with just the round section of this to turn it into kind of an arch rather than trying to slice into this and creating a, a cube slice where you have corners as well. But this works out. It's it's aesthetic, right? It's aesthetically pleasing and, it, and it's different, but it does really look like 
Palpatine's portal to me. <laughs> and during my life build, I constantly refer to it as Palpatine's portal because that's just what it looks like. It looks like something from Stargate or something, something like that. I think the stairs are done pretty well too, even though they could have used some studs for holding things up. But check this out. There is one hidden feature here. So beneath these two squabbling family members, underneath, you can lift this up. I think it's attached with a, a couple too many studs, but you can lift this up and it's a secret hiding place, storage space for Palpatine's, sorry about that, little electrical thingies that he, you know, came out his, his force lightning bits that they came out with years ago with the two colors. And, you know, they're just available. So if you want to use them for a later part of the scene, you can, and it's a very convenient place to store them. Smart. I think all three of these minifigures are good, but one of them approaches greatness. It's a really interesting contrast from left to right in terms of level of realism, because this looks like a very comic version of Palpatine to me with that, that tan head. And also I think just leaning in a little bit more with the newer style of, of upper robe hood piece. I don't know. It, like they, they're trying to get it serious around the sides with some of the finer detail in there. And the production work is really good. I think the robes go, robe printing is good, especially the tie up at, up at the top. But it just feels like a Palpatine to me from the Lego animated specials, which was an awesome Palpatine. You know, it was super funny, but it just, I don't know. Feels like they were trying to go more serious with it, but it, it didn't turn out that way. But that's okay. It is it is it is Lego. It's not supposed to be realistic. But if you go to the other end, look at this new hairpiece for Luke, which is super realistic. It's kind of great. No, it is great. That is that is a fantastic hairpiece for that specific character. Of course, they will make it available for other characters in the future. That's 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 what they do. You know, anytime they have the ability to, they will reuse pieces, but that one is just so good. And it has a little bit of surface texture as well. It's not super shiny. Just the tiny, like the finest of surface, surface texture. I'm not even talking about the, the obvious waves in the hair, you know? It makes it a little, a little bit, a little bit matte, kind of a, a satin finish, a low satin finish, which is really nice. Now this version of Vader uh, does have the full arm printing on both arms. That looks pretty good. And we'll have to take some stuff off. Oh, let's look around the, the back just so you can see the print on the back as well. Yeah, so, you know, that all matches up nicely. And there's his face. There's no alternate face for Vader, though, because they've got the scars on the back of his head. You do get the smiling face for, or almost smiling face, you know, kind of satisfied face for Luke. Oh, and I should mention that the lightsaber blades these days are consistently frosted on the outside with no bubbles inside. These are the leftover pieces and no stickers were used in this set. Again, I paid $100 US for this. It is 100 euros, 90 pounds UK, or $130 Canadian, which is equal to $96 US. I have to keep calling out that particular um, conversion because I still continue to get a lot of really nasty comments, unfortunately, from Canadian viewers attacking me for being in the U.S. and attacking everybody who's in the U.S. for being unfair to the rest of the world and having cheaper prices on Lego than Canada does. But that's just not true most of the time. It, things are a few dollars cheaper in Canada. Let's, let's just be civil and also let's look at facts. Conversion rates are readily available on the internet. No matter what, I still feel like this is too expensive for what it is. Some people will disagree with me there but I was not raised rich. I am not rich. I feel like I've always had to work for my money um, hard at that. And I feel like I value, um, I value things. I value work. I, I value the work that's needed to generate funds. And I don't like the idea of looking at something, liking it, and being willing to pay absolutely anything for it. I don't think we should be willing to pay absolutely anything for this, but that's just my personal opinion. I'm not trying to push that on anybody. I'm just letting you know my perspective. I think that this is not worth $100. Uh, even with it being like 40th anniversary, even if that was like 50th anniversary, uh, it being Star Wars, it being Lego, even, you know, any new parts, colors, prints, anything like that. Maximum with all the premiums in 2023, with all the inflation, I would not want to see this over $70.
personally, like 70, yeah, max, max, max. Okay, so I'd like a significant discount on this. The good news is that increasingly we're seeing significant discounts on high-priced Lego items. Of course, over in Europe, many countries get day one big discounts on a bunch of sets, like 20% easily on day one. I hear about it all the time. It's not common around the world, though. However, even in the United States, where for the last few years, due to all the economic turmoil and you know supply chain issues and all that, high demand, uh, low supply, um, we had not been seeing sales very much. Sales are starting to come back. I think Trash Compactor Diorama, which was up to $100 retail, has been available in some places in the US for 62 retail in stores lately. So I think if something is overpriced, um, you can wait if you like it, because I like this. I think it looks good. I think it's presented well. I think it's a nice build. Uh, it's, it's not perfect to me, but it is Lego, so I could modify it if I wanted to, which is great. Uh, I think the minifigs are generally generally pretty good. But if you like it and you want it, but you don't want to pay $100, I think you can just be patient and get it for a little bit less uh, a little bit later on, which, which, is, which is cool. I think that's fine. I think that it's good for the market to work that way, as long as we recognize that we do not have to pay extortionate prices for things if we don't want to you know we consumers do have the power we don't have to tell ourselves i must get this set for 100 dollars right now i must get five of them if i can to put them in the closet to hold on to them to later sell this luke hairpiece for a profit later on you know we don't have to do that we can just wait if you like this you want it on display wait you can get it if you think it's worth 100 that's cool I don't. If you just like that new Luke hair piece, because it's amazing, you can go and buy it on Bricks and Pieces right now. You can get it on, on Pick a Break. It's, it's like a, a dollar, two dollars at most or something like that. Yeah. I just try to have a, a reasonable grounded um, take. But again, personal opinions only, always. I'm trying to show you things as fairly as I can. But thank you for watching. Hope that you enjoyed this. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.